Good morning, everybody. This is Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. We have a different perspective this morning with the camera, and there is a reason for that. Yesterday, I was working on some things, and let me just let me just tell you what I did. Let's start from the beginning, and this is actually going to tie into today's journal spread. I have this uh, this envelope that I was making to send to Sheila Gingrich at Boho Daydreams because of a challenge that she's doing. And if you can see the inside of that, it is so pretty the way uh, the, the dampness or the liquid from the layers that I used on the other side of the paper soaked through. Of course, there is some silky trim. I'm going to use some of the fabrics that Sheila sent me. This is something that I had and I just wanted to share that with Sheila. I don't normally find a lot of really pretty bohemian type silky and Indian fabrics. Every once in a while I do. I can see the trash truck outside. But Sheila is my go-to for the bohemian fabrics. The bright, beautiful, decorated She's collected for a long time and has just beautiful items. This first one was sort of a happy accident, and I'll tell you about that. So I decided I was going to make some more, and it all started from this page in the journal where, you know, I, I did several transformations, and I loved your comments on that. Gina, I could hear you saying, what are you doing, lady? So... It, we found out that this ink came through. There's the little bird. I did some distressing on this, and I'm gonna go back and finish this page for the video. But I decided to try to do some of this on purpose. And I tried some different inks. This one had blue, which I like a lot better than the black. First of all, you have to write on the page. And I figured, well, everything I write is going to be backwards. So I just, you know, when it soaks through and you turn it over, everything's going to be backwards. I decided to just make my own alphabet. Well, it's not a real alphabet, as you can see. Then, when it was still a little damp, not too much because this ink really spreads. You can see that. It runs. I let it dry for a few minutes, and then I went over it with a layer of gesso. I let that dry for just a short amount of time. Again, just a couple of minutes. And then I went back with a layer of gold paint, quite a thick layer of gold paint. And that takes a while to dry. Once you get past this point, you're gonna to have to let it sit and, and dry for a while and let it do its thing. But while it was still wet, I took one of my favorite stamps and I put gesso all over this. I painted it on and then stamped it into the gold paint while it was still wet. Then you just let it sit and things do come through. I'm I'm going to try it again with this tea stained paper and I'm going to use the blue ink again and see what kind of effect I get. And it's a fun process. It's very, very fast except for the drying time that you just have to let it do its thing. Anyway, so this was laying on the desk. My camera was overhead. I wasn't using it at the time, but I was, I had been using it and I was working on some other things and I hear this loud pop and my camera falls right into this wet page. That's where it landed. See, there were some, you can see where it messed up the, the stamping that I had done. Yesterday was one of those days. I can't complain. Well, now I will say I had to be at a meeting downtown and during the meeting, you know, we're going through the agenda and all of a sudden there is this massive sound and the ceiling in the building that we were in actually dipped and went back up, almost like a vacuum. And everybody stopped and we looked around and we had no idea what had happened, but we found out later that there was a gas leak in downtown Durham where a construction worker hit a gas line. And from what I understand, all the right permits had been gathered and it was all done the way it was supposed to be done but he still hit a gas line 
at least one person is dead. I heard yesterday at one point that two people had died, but the news is still saying just one person, so I don't know. It's probably hard to tell what's what when, it, when that kind of situation is going on. That did not affect me personally at all, except to make me really sad because of downtown Durham and most of all the loss of life and the injuries. Apparently there were some pretty horrific injuries from flying glass and burns. Of course, my clip just broke spontaneously and the camera fell. I went out later in the day to do some errands and I went into the post office to mail some things. I was supposed to pick up boxes while I was in there and do you think I remembered standing right there looking at them to get them? No, I didn't. I remembered when I was back out in traffic later. Went through Starbucks and Someone very generously sent me a Starbucks card. Thank you so much. I love it. I thought yesterday was going to be a day to get an iced coffee. And I went through the drive through at this particular Starbucks, and I was greeted by, we don't have any ice. We're all out of ice, so we only have hot coffee right now. And anyway, it yesterday was just an, a day that felt a little odd. It just seemed like everything that I wanted to do something sort of went off track and it's nothing compared to what a lot of people are going through sorry to get so sidetracked here i know that takes a lot of time let's get over to this page i do know that i want to go back to you know what i'm going to use this right under here because i don't mind if things overlap a little bit I might leave this the way it is for now. I did some distressing, which I didn't do on camera because you've seen that. All I did was take my distress ink pad and just darken that page up a little bit. And now that I say that, the only thing I would probably add is just to go back around the edges a little bit. It did cross my mind to put some alcohol ink on this page, but I don't really want it to soak through to the other side. So... On this side, I want to stick with the blue, and I'm, I'm just going to add some color to the page, make it heavier around the edge. Try to stay mostly on the page. You don't want great big stripes on this lined paper we're going to work with. And you can work with whatever you have in your stash, of course. I think this graph paper is pretty. Kind of want it just to show. So now I'm going to take some water. I love these gelatos. I had no idea I would like these so much, but the color is really, it's really pretty. I like it a lot. It goes on so smoothly. That's what I was thinking to say, but couldn't seem to get it out. So let's do some I wonder if we mix the blue get off that those extra little pieces it looks like there's already some purple in there and purple is what I was gonna say I wonder if we mix some blue and some purple it may end up just with a mess but we're going to try it, and let me get some water on this brush, enough to really, ooh, made that purple really bright. Break up all those pieces. Oh, look at that. So if you just run the brush along the, that's not what I was going to do, actually, but <laughs> now that I've figured that out. So just run it down the side, and that does a perfect stippling without putting it all over the desk. We're getting some on the desk, but I keep these big calendar pages on my desktop to somewhat protect my art desk. I really love this, this desk. Jason just let me take it over. What I was going to do is add some polka dots. I know we've done this already, but I'm a little bit enchanted with polka dots lately. So I think I will just put some more down. Put some half ones on the 
I wonder if we want it over the whole thing. Maybe. Yeah, I like it. Oops. Well, that slid all over the place. But that's okay. That'll be... See that mark over here? I think it's pretty. Okay, let me um, just at least wipe this off. I'm being really gentle. I'm not pulling on that. I did wipe around the edge. I like having this a lot. It's amazing how, you know, taking a coupon into the art store and trying something you've never tried at all will just expand what you know to do. Now let's let that dry and get to this page. So let's shake this ink up and start dipping this pen. I know I've mentioned it before, it takes a while for it to really start writing, at least in my experience. What's fun is to kind of challenge your brain to do a word backwards. So like if I was going to write Joseph, I've been <laughs> thinking, how would that look? backwards and I've been trying to do it really fast so that it ends up looking like some kind of real language. You know authors have made languages for their books like J.R.R. Tolkien for Lord of the Rings I believe. My son Joseph could tell all about that. He's my reader after being uh, dyslexic. Well, he's still dyslexic, but he did not really read until he was about 14. And then that became his favorite, favorite thing to do. When you struggle with language and you can't read, the way he told me is that it, it made him angry I don't know if that's the word he used, but it was very frustrating to him that people who could read easily and it came easy to them, they took it for granted and he struggled to be able to understand language. So once he could read, that's all he did. I will share something that, you know, I used to be, when I was in the midst of homeschooling, it scared me to death all the time. And one of the reasons we started homeschooling was because of Joseph and how he was just really not reading. And my children went to public, public school and they were homeschooled. We're not anti-public school at all. Um, in fact, my, my children would not be who they are without some of the uh, public school teachers they had. And especially a couple of my children loved public school and we were glad for them to be enrolled in a wonderful charter school and then a public high school for my son. He really enjoyed it and graduated and just, you know, did different things, extracurricular things. So anyway, Joseph just was getting lost and none of the resources seemed to be helping and the teachers were frustrated and Joseph began to look lazy to the teachers but I knew that he wasn't. I raised him and I had him at home every day you know doing chores and 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 really being one of the ones who would do what you told him to do. You know some children don't want to go make their bed if you tell them to. Joseph was the type who would feel badly if he didn't do what was asked of him. So when he graduated, well, his 11th year, he homeschooled all the way through, at second grade onward. And when we went to get his testing done in 11th grade, his spelling was a second grade level, but his reading comprehension was second year college. So, you know, the tester assured me that things would be fine. She said anybody who has that kind of reading comprehension and loves to read that much, you know, there's there are things to help him. There's spell check, 
and all of that sort of thing, and he will learn. She said he's he's got what it takes. So I tried not to worry. And then his senior year when we had him tested, his reading comprehension had jumped to fourth year college, and his spelling had jumped to third grade. So, you know, he's, he we text now all the time. He's got two beautiful children, and... I read his text. He has no problem with spelling now. He's There are some things that I want to say, uh-oh, Joseph, that's not right. Anyway, I've gotten way off track, but he's 27 years old now, and I'm so proud of him. He is such a good dad. He's such a good son. He's such a good man. Anyway, he loved J.R.R. Tolkien. He read all of those books. He knows all about the author, the languages, the just all about that series. Look how this is already coming through. This paper is going to make all the difference. Oh, I can pull things down without disturbing the camera. I don't know. This view might end up being being better. You'll have to let me know what you think. So let's just see how that starts to run. Oh my goodness. But some of that ink will have some of that ink will have already soaked into the fibers of the paper. So this is not erasing what we, what we wrote. And you'll see that on the other side. I'll see you on the other side. So look what it's doing on that side. And yes, as wet as that is, I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of gold paint. I love gold paint. I buy it with coupons. If you look back through my videos, we recently did a gold paint test to test some of the brands. I had bought a really cheap little bottle of gold paint and I did not really like it. Um, you know, I guess you get what you pay for. Now we've got one more step and this is where we get to the point where this page has to dry. And I, I guess I could get one of those heat guns. I don't have one of those. I have used a hair dryer. Kind of do what you want to with the lines. I like to make it more smooth. So here's the stamp. And let's put some gesso on this stamp. And I tell you, I might be messy sometimes. But one thing I always clean up immediately is... Um, any stamp that I use. And then we're just going to stamp right into this gold paint, but we're not going to put that brush in again. So there, now we're at the point where that needs to dry. I'm going to go wash this stamp. Good morning, everybody. This is the next day or even the day after. I have, of course, been busy with work. And I'm just up this morning enjoying my coffee before I leave again and go to my wonderful job. I wanted to show you the outcome of this beautiful paper. There's our journal page that we were working on. And this is the page that's now dry. I actually ripped it a little bit. But that's okay. We can still use that. And in order to make the envelope that I made. I just folded it. But I'm wondering with this one if I want to put this on the outside. I don't think so. It's so that gold is so beautiful. So we're going to turn it up about this far. I'm going to go so along the edges. But what I did before was to flip this over and then turn this back up. And that will help take care of this rip because we're going to sew across that flap. And then I'm going to use some of the beautiful embellishments that came from Boho Daydreams for this one. So I'm going to take care of that and I'll be right back. Let's see. I'm back and I just need to glue this into the center of the envelope. So let's put that there so that that can dry and trim off these little strings on the edge. You can hear my coffee pot in the kitchen. So there is another 
beautiful envelope. And when we open it up, we can see these pages could be used for so many things. I just decided to use one for this journal as well as to try some things out for the challenge that Sheila is doing. This journal is starting to fill up and I want to write some things here. That will be my journal entry. I'm going to use my blue um, indigo blue ink for the quill or dip pen. And it's the 13th. Oh yeah, how could I forget tax time. Now we're just going to see how these do on the gelatos because even though the gelatos are uh, water soluble, to me they feel they feel like crayons. They feel like oil pastels in a way, even though they're not. Okay, so that's that part. And uh, I'm going to include this envelope in this in this section. It's got the pretty blue on it. I won't lay it down in that ink until the ink is dry. But there's something else that I want to do today as well in this journal. Let's put, um, let's just put this here while I'm looking back. Let's go all the way back to the front. I have this, this was a sample, a fabric sample, and it's been washed. I just love these edges, and I love some of the colors in this. So I am going to put some tabs in my journal, perhaps. I'm gonna go back through and look for places where we might be able to include some. So I've got one here. I've been wanting to use this up, so this seems like a good time. I like that color there. So I'm going to pull this down. I don't want to cover up my little compass mark there. And put that there. We may come back and put something else there. Let's just see. We could get a tiny little piece. Okay, yeah, I like just that tiny, tiny little piece. All right, starting to fill up. Just to finish up, I love that this bird is showing through. I'm going to put this envelope in here, and what I will use this for is to collect things from throughout the month. I will probably put a clipping about the explosion that happened. It's all in the news here. And, um, you know, I may have a few other things to go in. But our pages are just filling up really nicely. I keep thinking of things I would like to do. I should stamp the word queen across here for my grandmother. I'm going to put some beads on here, but we will worry about that later. And for now, I'm finished. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize that sometimes it takes me a couple of days to get a new video up, but this journal is supposed to be enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget that I'm having a giveaway. Does it end tomorrow? I have to look. No, Monday, I think. So be sure and let me know if you want to be entered in that, and... I will have another one right after that one. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.